Henry Dolger was him. He would go on to reshape what San Francisco looked like and eventually make his own city. But before that, humble beginnings. Henry Dolger was born in San Francisco, California in 1896. His parents ran a German bakery. At an early age, Henry was already him. When he was age 10, the infamous 1906 San Francisco earthquake struck. And what did Henry do? Being a 10 year old little boy, he went around the city to collect and salvage window weights that had lead in them. And he could sell this valuable lead from the window weights. Can you just imagine? Damn, this city will never recover. Uh, excuse me, sir. For what? Ah, child! Would you like to buy some window weights? Uh, I, I don't know if you can see around you, boy, but uh, I have no house to really have a window weight. I mean the lead in the window weight, you jackass. Damn, you are feisty. Sir, please don't waste my time. Are you gonna buy a window weight or not? <laughs> waste your time, son. You have all the time in the world. And you look like you don't have a lot of time left. You know, I can fucking dropkick you. According to Susan Dolger, Henry's daughter, Henry made $300 selling these window weights. Imagine $300 in 1906, which was a lot, but a 10 year old having that much money. Henry would drop out of school in the eighth grade. Unfortunately, his father passed away. He would take on a number of odd jobs to help support the family. These odd jobs would consist of him being a marine merchant, a bartender, and moving liquor. Yeah, remember Prohibition? That was a thing during his time, and he was part of moving liquor. He only stopped when his wife almost got caught moving liquor. That scared the bejeebies out of him. Eventually, his older brother Frank would get him into the real estate business. Frank would teach Henry how to buy and sell lots, and for plenty of years, Henry would buy and sell lots in San Francisco. Specifically, in the Sunset District. But after plenty of years, there came a time when he couldn't keep buying and selling lots. It just wasn't profitable anymore. <sighs> I can't keep buying and selling these lots. I guess it's time. <laughs> builder, he began to build houses. And this is where the legend begins. You see, Henry would reshape how San Francisco looked. For those who don't know, in San Francisco, there are plenty of houses, plenty of houses that look the goddamn same, especially in the Sunset District of San Francisco. Though these houses are not grand or luxurious looking, they were houses because Henry wanted to make houses affordable for families. And by God, he... He made a lot of these goddamn houses. You come to San Francisco, you see, you'll see them everywhere. The unfortunate irony of this is that he made affordable housing, right? For families, right? Yeah, these houses, these houses that he made, they go for millions today. Oh, how times have changed. Now I fucking hate it. According to one of Henry's architect, Ed Hageman, Henry was a fun boss to work for because he was him. No, no, they weren't the same person. I was trying to say that like, it's an expression, him for any other of the older people who are watching. We're, we're trying to say that Henry was him. He was the guy, he was a good guy. That's what I meant by him. He wasn't like, I realize how that sounded. I need to stop, but he was him. By the 1930s, Henry became one of the largest home builders in America. So after many years building a bunch of houses in San Francisco, space was getting a bit cramped. I mean, it makes sense. You build like a bunch of houses in San Francisco, a very dense place as it is. I think he's the reason why he made it dense, actually. Yeah, it makes sense if Henry Dolger is the reason why this place is dense as fuck. All the goddamn houses he made. I mean, good on him, but like, damn. He looks southward. Is that a word? Southward? He, he looked southern. He looked, he went, he went to the south of San Francisco, to Daly City, and brought up a 1300 acre tract, which will later become known as Westlake. Little boxes on the hillside. Little boxes made of ticky tacky. Little boxes on the hillside. Little boxes all the same. There's a pink one and a green one and a blue one and a yellow one and they're all made out of ticky tacky and they all look just the same. And I'm back. Now let's back it up a bit because I keep saying that Henry made a city. Well, technically he did make a city, but it was in a city. Okay, Westlake isn't a city, but it's like a big ass community. But it isn't like a private community or anything like that. It's just a public community. He just, okay, look, you got Daily City, right? Okay, cool. Okay, part of Daily City is Westlake, a big ass chunk of it. You cannot talk about Daily City without talking about Westlake. That's what he did. There we go. Cool. We're, we're good. Okay, we're good. People in other building firms thought that Henry was making a terrible mistake. They're like, hey, yo, Big H. Oh, yeah? What's up? You're making a big mistake, Big H. A big mistake, but it's just a bunch of land in the southern part of San Francisco. No one wants to live out here, Big H. Oh, trust me. They will want to live out here. No, they won't, Big H. 
Uh, are you okay? I don't know, Big H. Uh, I have a lot of trauma, Big H, that has not been dealt with. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I don't know either. One of the dopest things I feel as though Henry said in his life was this. Hello, everyone. Oh, hey, Henry. Yo, it's the boss. You guys have been with me for plenty of years. Damn straight, we've been building this city. We built this city on rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. I, I know we felt like we built San Francisco. We, we, we kind of did. But, but, San Francisco was already here. True that, true that. You ain't wrong, you ain't wrong. Come and help me build a city. Wait, what? Yeah. Huh? Listen, I have a huge amount of land in Daly City that needs to be constructed on. Oh, where? Oh, damn, Henry. I know, I know. The other building firms don't believe in my vision, but I believe in my vision, and I need you guys to believe in my vision too. Now, are you with me? You know what? I'm with you, Big H. Yeah, me too. Right. Now let's make a fucking city. Henry was such him. Oh, <laughs> Henry was such him. He was so him. He drove his son out to the 1300 acre track and said, you see this son? You're kind of in the way. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. <clears throat> you see this son? It's just a bunch of dirt for now, but soon it will be a city. A city? It will be houses, schools, malls. Ain't this daily city? Yeah, but like, <clears throat> Everything that the light touches- I'm just being funny. I'm in no way trying to discredit what Henry did. He just- he made a city in my opinion. And the work began. You see, at the end of World War II, there was a lot of surplus vehicles left over in the war, and Henry had the foresight to just buy all of them at auction. I got an idea. Oh, yes, Big H? Okay, so we're building an entire city. For sure, for sure. We're building houses, we're building everything. We, we're gonna need some vehicles, right? Yeah, that's actually been an issue that we've been trying to avoid, but like, yeah, we, we're, we've been trying to find some- Auction? Auction? We just got out of a big war. That we did. We won that shit too, we won that shit, yeah. Yeah, we won that shit yeah we won that shit okay be serious uh, okay okay i'm sorry there's a lot of surplus vehicles after the war <gasps> that's up for that's up for auction oh oh sir oh your foresight <laughs> i know i know I, just, hey, hey hey go to the auction for me get all the vehicles all right i'm, I'm gonna go with melvin no, don't go with melvin you don't get shit done with melvin oh oh so Henry Dolger and his team would get a bunch of vehicles, vehicles left over from the war, and these vehicles would help them build all the houses. Henry also had the foresight to make his own lumber mill on the site. This way they didn't have to worry about running out of wood. That's that's pretty slick. The shit that this man thought of. Dolger was also the first West Coast builder to abandon the old ways of building walls for homes. You see, he began to use a material called sheetrock. He found sheetrock to be more efficient and less expensive to install. Now, his competitors ridiculed him for this. Hey, hey. What do you want, Todd? You heard what that Henry guy's doing? He's building a bunch of houses. Eh, wrong, nope. See, this is why no one fucking invited you to that one baby shower. Wait, what? <laughs> Never mind. look. He's using sheetrock. Sheetrock? You know, sheetrock, that's stupid material to make walls and stuff. That's just really cheap. Okay, and like, why do you care? It's stupid, right? Look, Todd, I know you're in competition with this guy, but like, you don't have to obsess over him. Ah, fuck off. I'm, I'm gonna go tell someone who's actually interested in my, you know, obsession. Uh, okay. Though his competitors did ridicule him for using sheetrock, guess what happened years later? And I was telling him if we went down that direction. Hey, fuck, hold on, I'll talk to you later. What do you want, Todd? I'm gonna need you to put in a new order for sheetrock. Sheetrock? Wait. Wait, you mean that material you told me about years ago? What are you talking about? Todd, I know that you are plenty of things. And one of those plenty of things is a big ass jackass with a big ass memory. Uh, uh, don't you try to tell me that you don't remember talking shit about Henry Dolger for using sheetrock years ago. Put in the fucking order now, all right? Hypocrite! That didn't happen. That, that... That's just a skit. I don't know who Todd is. Maybe Todd is me. I have a therapy session in two weeks. Moving on. Yeah, the same competitors who ridiculed Henry for using sheetrock would later on end up using sheetrock themselves. Soldier's company completed seven homes a day in Westlake. And, and do you wanna know? Do you wanna know how much it was for one home in Westlake? Go on, guess. No. 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 Lower that bitch. No. Nope. Yep. A bingo, bingo, bingo. $10,000. 10,000 kablooms. I don't know what kablooms are. I meant to say kablooms. $10,000. God, times changed. The cool thing about the construction of these homes was that the way that they structured everything and utilized all the workers, Henry took after the 
the Henry Ford model, how there's only one worker for one specific job. The same workers who would lay the foundation for the concrete for the homes will be the same workers to do the same foundation for the other homes the next week. Same people to install the walls and everything will be the same people to install the walls next week. That's the only thing they did. They did not do any other job. Because when you are a person laying foundation, and that's your only job, you're going to get better at it, faster at it, and more efficient at it. So these houses being made, of course they were fast. Henry Dolger wanted a lot of variation when it came to his homes. He didn't want his city to look like Levytown. Ugh. Levytown. Fuck lives in Levytown. If you live in Levytown, I'm so sorry. Please continue watching the video. I'm just doing this for jokes. <clears throat> Yuck. Anyways, Levytown was something like Westlake, but just bad. All the homes look the same, and you'll feel like you're in some liminal space. Get the fuck off the screen, Levytown. <laughs> yeah, go. Not welcomed here. Anyways, Dolger made every single house look different while keeping the floor plan the same. The exteriors just looked different. Some homes had modern designs while others had more of traditional designs. Ain't that something? Another neat thing that Dolger did was put the power lines in the back of the homes instead of having power lines in the front of homes looking all ugly when you look up and stuff. One of Westlake's most distinguished homes actually was supposed to be a joke. Y you see this little house right here? You see how, how groovy it looks? You see how funny it looks with the slanted roofs and the protruding window? So this house was designed by architect Ed Hageman. And one day, Henry was just, wow, these are really good designs, Ed. Wow. <laughs> yeah, just, just keep flipping through the pages. I swear, you are a really good architect, Ed. And... Ed? <laughs> what is this, Ed? <laughs> it's just, it's just, uh, this? <laughs> yeah, this is a baller ass design. <laughs> Wait, what? I like that. This is a baller ass design. The slanted roofs, the, the protruding window. Big H, Henry. What? That's a joke. That was a joke design. No, I'm fucking with it. I'm fu that, That's gonna be real. Henry, that, that, I, I was just kidding. Nah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be real. Wait, no, you, you, you're fucking with me. You, you, you use some like reverse psychology to prick me back, huh? Ed, no, this is, this is me being real. This, this is from the heart. <laughs> I fucking love working for you. Yeah. Yep. So this cute little design, even though it was meant to be a joke, it was realized because it was a baller ass design. Now the community of Westlake was set up in a very carefully unique way. You see, there's a big boulevard that cuts in the middle of Westlake that leads to another big boulevard. Think of a big ass T. And instead of having the houses right next to the big boulevard streets, Henry's company constructed buffer streets to separate the houses completely from the traffic and the noise in the streets. Henry's company went by some book of how to properly build a community and set up neighborhood units. This layout provided great traffic flow and gently curved streets. In each neighborhood unit, there was a School, either located in the center or the perimeter. This made it very easily accessible. That's just dope. It's just like, he really thought about the people and how he was going to make it comfortable for them to live there. Honestly, this is exactly what the suburb was supposed to be, but nah, now we got... You have to drive a bunch until you get out of your fucking subdivision. In addition of all the Westlake homes, Henry Dolger also built apartments. The apartments were really meant for younger people in hopes that maybe later on they may want to go and start a family and boom, buy a Westlake home for 10,000 fucking dollars. I'm still not over that. Now, these apartments are placed between the, all the residential houses and the big Westlake shopping mall. Oh, Westlake shopping mall. I've been there so many times as a kid and as an adult. It's just fun because you get to see all the cool houses and all the apartments. Just a very chill place to go. It has all the vibes. This wasn't just a shopping mall. This was the center hub of Westlake. This is where people can do all their shopping and just hanging out. He surrounded the shopping mall with all the apartments because most of the population lived in the apartments and the apartments served as a great buffer zone between the houses and the shopping mall. You see, Dolger really tried to design Westlake in a way where people didn't have to rely on going to San Francisco all the time, making that 15 to 20 minute trip all the way to the city to do their shopping and what have you. In fact, the cool thing about Westlake Shopping Mall was that it was one of the first of its kind. Yet yeah, you see, Shopping malls with big parking lots where they have sidewalks that connect to a bunch of other stores with two big anchor stores wasn't a common thing back then. In fact, Westlake had one of the first shopping malls in America. Again, Henry Dolger is him. Henry Dolger got the idea when he visited LA and saw that LA had a shopping mall. He wanted that, and so he got that. There was also office spaces in the shopping mall as well to rent out. And I believe there was a dentist there too. I think the dentist is still there. And around Westlake, I believe there was also a bowling alley, pub Public library and just amenities that people used every day. Again, Henry Dolger set out to build a city 
and he did. One last cool thing about Westlake is their schools. Westlake has some unique looking schools, especially their high school, Westmore High. These schools were designed by architect Mario J. Giampi, and he utilized glass a lot in his designs. As you can see, he really wanted to make you feel as though you were inside and outside at the same time. Just, just I'm just gonna, look, look, look. These school, hey, come on, come on. Why don't we have schools everywhere like that? Why, why, why couldn't my school look like that? My school was a fucking prison. No, legit, look. See, that, 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 that was a prison. The design, I mean, not like an actual prison, but <laughs> damn. Anyways, overall, Westlake was a success. Go to Westlake today in Daly City, California. You will still see all those homes there. You will still see all those apartments and you will still see the shopping mall center. It's there. You know why it's still there? Because it worked. That's all I got to say. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I got all my information from a documentary made on YouTube by Monique Anton about Henry Dolger. I highly suggest you to go check it out. It gives a better, more in-depth version of the information I just gave. And I'm very confident, very confident that the information is very accurate because they interview the very children of Henry Dolger and the architects that work with Henry Dolger. So yeah. Pretty sure that all that information's right. And to the family of Henry Dolger, this is in no way trying to disrespect Henry's name. I'm just a dude who's trying to make history funny. I hope I showed him in a good light. I hope people can find the obvious exaggerations in the little skits I done. I'm sure he was a pleasant, classy man. And I find him to be very interesting and that's why I wanted to make a video about him because he really did reshape San Francisco and build a city. That's all I gotta say. Please check out my other videos. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Just gonna stay here until you check out my other videos. Yeah, this is not, yeah. This, this is it. It's the end of the video. Go check them out. Please. They're right there. Check them out. Now.